Right, so welcome to the next version of the Financial Intelligence Mindset Podcast, and we bring you different guests from different backgrounds all the time. And today we bring you someone from the Caribbean, which I'm really, really happy about, uh, Ricardo. And Ricardo is really a tech guy, you know, and um, he started a few tech companies. And in fact, he actually jumped into entrepreneurship from the age of 20, which is really, really good. I think most people kind of uh, go into jobs and then they go into entrepreneurship later on. Some people go in obviously very, very young, but he's in there. And he's actually right now uh, messing around with some blockchain technology stuff. Man, I will let him actually explain it all. Really, really super, super happy to have him on the podcast. So Ricardo, just um, the first thing I would say to you is that um, just tell us your backstory. Like growing up, um, what what made you think that entrepreneurship or entrepreneur entrepreneurial is something that or entrepreneur something that you want to do? What was it about your background? Maybe, maybe people you saw in the community, maybe your mentors. Just tell me about your backstory. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for having me, Royston. Uh, good to be here. So I, I'd say I was an entrepreneur early on. Sometimes, okay, my father would drop us to school and sometimes he'd drop us a little early. As you know, school in the Caribbean starts 9 a.m. So sometimes I'd be at school from 7.15, 7.30. So what I would do, I would just draw in the spare time. These were really in the early days, maybe grade two, grade three, grade four, and that stuff. And then some of the children, some of my pupils really liked the drawings. And uh, one asked me if she can have one, I remember. And then I said, no. And then I remember another person offered me money for one. And then it, <laughs> it's like a light bulb lit off. And then I started selling those, you know, and then I started selling other little things. So it started from there. I, I was always in enterprising from those early ages. I always knew that, you know, uh, being able to make your own money has its own value. So I always took that approach. Even when I had jobs, I, this was always the goal, you know? I like it. I like it. I like it. So basically, yeah, yeah pretty much a kind of a Caribbean story, right? Selling, selling things from young. I mean, I remember starting selling... Um, confectionaries in school from the age of eight. Mm. Um, so, you know, I can pretty much understand. So tell us about your, your very first business. I mean, how was it? Okay, first business, actual business. Okay, that's still present, Island Business Media. So what I do with that, I build websites and do some, you know, small scale digital marketing for, for digital media presence for businesses. Uh, it's been rewarding. Uh, had, a, had some really remarkable clients, and uh, yeah, yeah. In short, yes. So I started that when I had my last job. I started that cool, when I had cool, my cool. last as a yeah. side hustle. As a side hustle. So where yes, did you? So, so how? So how did you learn about business? Obviously, I focus a lot on financial management as well. But how did you learn about business? But you said that it's still a success, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been running for a few years now, am I correct? Four now. Four years now. So well Almost done five. to you. So well done to you. Well done to you, right? So um, so but did you study business at school? Shortly, but most of the most of the knowledge I gained was via trial and error. I'll be honest with you, Roy Boyston. Yeah, yeah. Most of trial and error, you know, uh time yeah. and effort and sweat. Yeah. I understand. I understand. So, so, so when it comes to like finance and money management and knowing how to do a cash flow or all that kind of stuff, I mean, who taught you that? I did a few classes. I did a few entrepreneurship classes since, uh, since I was about 19 years old. Those were very helpful. Uh, some online tools as well. And then I remember a, I had a business studies class when I was in the ninth grade. And the teacher, it was both computer studies and business studies, just basic office procedures and the like. And then it was business studies as well. And we learned how to put together, you know, spreadsheets and cash flow statements and all of that. So that knowledge from then I, I hung on to and it does help me. I, I love yeah. it. I love it. 
Uh, it's, yeah. amazing. it's amazing. Um, I like what you said because I was talking to a guy yesterday and uh, and he's a, he's a multi-millionaire man, multi-multi-millionaire. I think um, I have interviewed a few of those people on this podcast as well. And, um, and he was so adamant about investing in yourself, investing in yourself, investing yeah. in yourself, right? So in hindsight, would you say that if you were going to advise someone right now who is the age of 60, like my son, actually, who just got his who just got his all level results today in the UK, and he smashed it. As a matter of fact, got an A star in okay. A star, yeah A star in mathematics, A star in science, A in English, and whatever B's right. So, and if you're going to advise someone like him, my 16 year son, to uh, get into business at the age of 20, what mm-hmm. are some of the what are some of the not now that you've been in business for the last four years? What are some of the skills um, or tools or techniques? And what, is, what are some of the stuff you think he should learn in order to be successful? Okay. Networking. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Royston, yeah. networking in business is like, a, is like foundation to a house. It's, if it's not there, there's no business. There's no business. Networking is paramount. Sometimes I've learned that the hard way where, you know, I would engage a prospect initially, and then sometimes I would move on too soon. But, you know, maybe, maybe there, if I kept the relationship uh, going, something may have turned out in the future. That's one. Now, network, networking, sorry, is proportionate, I would say, to timing, you know. Time is important in business as well. As I mentioned before, you know, just because something doesn't happen uh, initially, that doesn't mean it cannot happen later. I'm sure you've seen this as well in your own business life, Royston. Those two. You mentioned the guy that you had on, I mean, that you had the conversation with uh, last, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Investing in yourself. That will always be the best investment. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself, whether it's a, it's a book, It's a a course, a class, an experience, or just some overall exposure. If you feel that would take you to the next step, because we all have this, we all have this ideal self that we want to be, yeah? You too? Yes, correct, of course, yeah. If you feel that can take you to a next step or next level with you developing your ideal self, please do. Don't waste any time. Please invest in yourself. You won't regret it. No matter the cost, no matter the effort. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, and the last one, that's three points. The last one I would give to him or any, you know, aspiring or budding entrepreneur or any present entrepreneur, um, just do it. I like just that. execute, you know? That's I like all. That. I like that. The worst so, thing you can do is nothing. I, I love it. I love it. So now, now that you've been in business for four years, and obviously you, you did most of what you just described, right? Uh, you networked, you, you know, you... Um, you know, yeah, I mean, you, know, you, you like you took classes, so you actually learn stuff, you know, and it obviously, and you and you are doing it right. <clears throat> yes. Um, what would you say uh, are some of the biggest challenges that you've had, and, and how have you overcome them? I mean, what, what are some of the biggest things that almost derailed you? Mm. Networking poorly in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, not being patient enough. Yeah. And. Uh, Yes, though mainly those two, mainly those two. Okay, okay. So you say, so you say, be patient and stuff. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah. Um. So have you ever had a time when you almost like run out of money, or maybe you you always had a, you always had an abundance of money? Oh, definitely. Business, because because yes. because in business in business the first few years sometimes already tough tough years, right? Yes. So for you as a young man going into business, so from a financial perspective. I mean, uh, was it a case of like you start making profits from week one, month one, or was it a period that, you know, things were really tough, but you stick through it? Okay. Now, with that being said, it was, at the beginning, it was irregular. Yeah. So sometimes it would make some money and then there would be no follow-ups. This would be a result of poor networking, poor timing. It's not that the money wasn't up there. Um, the, the money is always out there, especially 
I, I would say, uh, speaking for myself in the service industries, if you, if you hustle or if you, you know, just network properly in time and if your product or your service is um, of a standard that the market wants. Mm -hmm. So those hurt me a lot. Um, yeah, there were some times where hey, I had to cut back on a lot of things. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> just thinking so, about it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I got it. I mean, and I, I like what you said. Money is always, I mean, I say the same thing. Money is energy. Money is everywhere. I always say to people, because I do group coaching program. I teach people to make more money, manage money better, multiply the money. I said to people, somebody else got your money. Yes. All, you, all you've got to do is come up with an, uh, an irresistible offer. Or you've got to identify their pain points, you know, and just go and just, you know, give them a solution. Give them value. And they will give you uh, money uh, back in, in return. So get into the mindset of an entrepreneur, more than into the mindset of an entrepreneur. You're in business. Things are tough. Um, you know, you, like you're not making money every week, every month. Mm -hmm. What what made you what made you think that is going to be a success? Uh, persistence. I just knew. I knew that if I stuck it through, mm -hmm. on the other side, it would be worthwhile. Because, and then again, Royston, I didn't give myself a choice. You know, I didn't want another gig. I didn't want another job. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I I enjoyed the freedom. I enjoyed the power to be dynamic and fluid. And um, you know, to me, that's priceless. That's priceless. Yeah, I, so, I, I agree, man. I know how it feels. You know, I mean, I've had that's I've had total time freedom for the last uh, few years, actually two years mm -hmm. to be exact. And it's okay. like it's surreal. I mean, obviously, I've gone through COVID in that period. It's been pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, tough. To, I, I had to navigate, uh, you know, uh, a financial journey, but over, in terms of time, I've been time yes. rich. I've been time rich. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still asset rich. But sometimes, of course, the cash flow is not exactly mm -hmm. there as you want it. But as you said, you've got to stick it through. You've got to believe in yourself and you've got to really, really, really push through. Okay. Yeah. So are you currently working in the business or are you working on the business? Rest that. I mean, are you working in the business day to day? Or now, now, now you've been there for four years. Have you built a team around you? Because obviously you, you're very big on networking. So talk to us about that process in terms of like, like now, now, now that you're four years on, how, how does that look like compared to when you start? Okay, so right now, in the initial stages, I did everything myself. Until I built a team, I outsourced. Uh, I outsourced the team of professionals that do what I do, but now they do it now. So uh, it's a breeze now to get anything done. You know, everything mm -hmm. nowadays is a schedule. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, what else? How would I say? Mm. Sometimes systems, like, like, like new systems in your business. Uh, I mean, what are some of the systems that, that you have set up? Okay, um, automated email management, automated, uh, how would I say it? Automated check-in emails. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, way, the way of gaining new prospects is more streamlined. At first, it was more, you know, it was more do this, do that, do this, do this. Let's see what works. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Nowadays, yeah. it's more. We know where to go. We know who to engage, you know. And if it doesn't work out, we probably execute it poorly. But we can always try again later. So, yeah. and it's it's a lot more relaxed, Royston. At first, yeah. um, in the initial days, 2017, in, and some of 2018, it was more, you know, go, go, go. There was a lot of angst. Go, go, go. It must get done. Go, go, go. It must be done. Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays, after, you know, I guess, you know, experience builds some confidence. And now it's like, it's more, you know, yeah. Relax. Yes, yes. Not, okay. not, not relax in terms of, uh, in the sense of 
not being, uh, not taking initiative or being less enterprising, but relaxed in terms of, it'll be okay. I understand. Because it has been okay. Yeah. I understand. I understand. More confidence, I guess. I guess success breeds confidence and, uh, you know, like, 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 so you've been through it. So now you think, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. So what's your outlook for the, like, um, I mean, I mean, before we go to the outlook, I mean, so, so in terms of your business right now, I mean, you mentioned that, that you're doing such something with a blockchain. I mean, I never understand blockchain technology. I, I understand it, it's a decentralized ledger system. I mean, can you explain to the audience, the people who don't know what cryptocurrencies, don't know what blockchain technologies, I mean, can you break it down for us? And then can you say kind of, why did you get into that kind of business? Okay, sure. Um, well, let's start with blockchain. Blockchain, in a nutshell, is a, is a database. Think of a database, but this database is distributed on ledgers. These ledgers are blocks, and these are predominantly available in the public domain. So because they are distributed on blocks in the public domain, everything has a sense of transparency. That's the nature of blockchain. Transparency, uh, security, and immutability. So with all of these being used, uh, utilizing this technology for various uh, industries would be, I won't say revolutionary, but, but would be innovative. Uh, case in point, finance, or let's go into let's be more specific, cryptocurrencies. You know, if I have control of this uh, currency or this legal tender that we're now seeing it's going to be, you know, if I have control of it, if I can see where it went or where it's going and that's immutable, you know, the chances for fraud, the chances for breaches and the chances for hacks not that these chances are uh, erased totally, because you know, I don't think uh, those uh, constraints or those problems will ever be erased. But the chances of them being uh, mitigated are substantial. So as we see now, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of early adopters, you know, they're all like, "Oh, I told you so. I told you so." This is the future and that, and my own country, well, it's not blockchain or cryptocurrency, but we have developed a CDBC, the sand mm -hmm. dollar. And wow. we've seen the buying value of these certain technologies and their value. Now, with that being said, going back to blockchain, let's think of it as a, as a timestamp. Now this timestamp, let's think of it as a, a diamond based timestamp. Now, as we know diamond, in order to destroy a diamond, you would need another diamond, yes? That's just the nature of the diamond, it's hardness and toughness. It's yeah, chemical, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, carbon isotope. So, we, we can think of the blockchain like that. In order to destroy something that's on the blockchain or to remove it, you would need so much computing power that it would be almost or virtually impossible. So if we can have timestamps of all of those data, you know, it creates a, a more sound and uh, further sense of security for everybody, for each shareholder, whether it be end user, developer or you know the institution so i got it i yeah. got it i got and it and when i did my research voice then you know i saw the underlying value in this and i said you know i would like to get into this and this mm -hmm. was in 2018 so since then you know because of the skills i had before i built a team we've been experimenting in the blockchain space. How can we leverage this technology for industries and businesses, enterprises alike? Since then we have built a, a suite of proof of concepts, use cases, and some small scale solutions. And uh, yeah, they yeah, are very proud of what we've done so far. We've had a few um, uh, 
what are those? Expos? Yeah, yeah. We were, uh, or Expo, yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sense, where yeah. we were able, just digitally for now, nothing, nothing in person, where we were able to demonstrate what we're capable of and what we're working on. Those have been very, uh, I, I'm proud of those. And uh, the I progress is going good. We're not where we want to be as yet. That'll take time. I'm prepared to wait. And we're persistent. We're dynamic. And uh, yeah, we have, we have the skill. And yeah, and I've read recently that they said blockchain is the new internet. I found that very interesting. Wow. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, yeah, so talk to, I mean, so yeah, so yeah, that, that's great. I mean, I, I understand what blockchain is myself. I mean, I actually own cryptos myself. I invested mm -hmm. in cryptos back in 2017, of course. It's taken a massive, massive dive um, um, recently. But um, but there you go. I mean, I think with any investment, you know, you have to know when to buy, when to sell, right? Um, yeah. But sometimes you always can't get caught out. Now, in terms of, um, I want to call it, um, data mining or mining. Um, so are you involved in that or, or, or not? No, we're not involved in mining at all. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, so what? So based on your business that, that, that you're doing, what value are you looking to add to the customer? What solutions are you looking to bring to the market? That is a great question. What we're looking to do mm -hmm. is to innovate enterprises Stream, streamline their businesses mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with a technology solution or a technology development that would increase efficiency, mitigate uh, breaches or any risk, security risks, uh, increase transparency, and overall on the front end would have a, a seamless user experience and a, an attractive user interface. Yeah so, so, yeah, so how does the blockchain technology help that or enables the that? The blockchain technology helps that with its underlying value, as I mentioned before, uh, with uh, immutability, interoperability, transparency, security, and uh, the like. I yeah, so let's, for example, let's try another industry. Let's try uh, maybe healthcare. You know, a lot of healthcare data around the world, it may get breaches for yeah. ransomware and the like. And a lot of this data is available in silos. When I say silos, I mean it's available separately where sometimes the necessary party or necessary stakeholder may not have access to all of the requisite data to make a thorough analysis at that given point. So with a, with a blockchain solution, we can, we can uh, how would I say, we can mitigate this risk by overhauling uh, that system or however they stored their data before. And we can create a solution where we can put all of that data in one, in one database. And there will be a timestamp, as I mentioned before, an immutable timestamp for when that data is updated. Each time there's new data, and that would not be breached anymore. No data would be removed anymore. And uh, therefore, the, the full scope of, let's say, each patient would be there on demand for any healthcare physician, any other stakeholder in the medical field. So if you just, if you just you know, soak that in and think of the value of that, you would see why you know, blockchain is something to take seriously. I got it, I got it, I got it. Cool, cool, cool. So from my perspective, I'm actually like, um, say, um, generally like I'm making money from this blockchain thing. I mean, what do you see um, as your main revenue stream? Actually, I'm gonna pause for a sec. I'm gonna pause for a sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so as I was asking you about, um, from the business that, that you are looking to do, this, this, this blockchain business for this customer, I guess your main revenue stream, I think, would be, as you said, providing more, is it more like a database? Because that's your background business, am I correct? So, so would you be providing like a database solution that's based on the blockchain technology? What we would be providing, we would be providing a service to, uh, to engage companies 
who may want some innovation in their specific departments or industries. And uh, some of these companies have an interest already, or sometimes we would engage them uh, mm -hmm. with a, you know, initial build, initial rapport, perhaps even a demonstration of what we can do based on the assessment of where they are. Uh, we would build a proof of concept or a prototype and then that can be scaled into a full scale solution. So that's mainly the revenue model. Building, I got it. 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 on the blockchain. I got it. All right. So from so okay, so you obviously started with some small software based and been a website to all that kind of stuff. And then you kind of evolve into this blockchain stuff. So I think what you what you're actually doing is creating multiple streams of revenue, right? So what is your kind of model uh, within your business for reinvesting money, for making money make money? How do you personally take your money and help it to make more money. Have you thought about that in any way? I have. Right now, the goal is to reinvest money, reinvest money, because <laughs> right now the goal now is to perhaps, you know, build our own platform, build our own platform into like a technology uh, platform or like, yeah. let's say, Mm, like let's say like a zoom or something what we're using now yes 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 correct something yeah. like that so that would be the goal that would be the goal uh, yeah yeah so you're going to reinvest yeah. your monies back into the business into some kind of like say, platform or something yeah yeah which i think which which i think makes sense a lot yeah 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 okay okay but um but but for now you're going to be keeping reinvesting back into back into the business per se yeah. Yes. All right. And so, yeah, and, and, and into yourself, because that's the best investment that you can make, right? So, yeah. so think, so thinking about like the Bahamas and thinking about like um, the Caribbean landscape per se, right? If if there's someone who wants to get into a business but don't have any money right now, mm. yeah, um, they, they, they just haven't got any money right now. I mean, based on your own experience, uh, time in business. Well, what would you advise them of some ways that they can start a business with no money? Okay. Starting a business with no money. <laughs> yeah. I'd say get a job first. <laughs> <laughs> would you, yeah. would you? You're going to need some money. I think you're going to need some money, you know, maybe even, even if it's just to, you know, get a car done or something of that sort. You're going to need some money. So maybe you can get a, a job first, but, you know, keep in mind of the end goal to start a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. So let's, I understand. Say that, let's say that's done. I, I, I'm going to do two scenarios. Let's say that's done. Uh, that individual can learn a skill. There's a lot of tools out there where individuals can learn skills. Uh, online, you know, online learning platform, online learning services, you know, those pay dividends uh, yeah, to yeah. the individual, whoever uses them. You can do that. You can learn to network, go to seminars. Please network. Please network. Please network. Please <laughs> re-engage your everybody in your network. Please yeah. check in on everybody in your network. Learn their birthdays. If they have a dog, ask. Do do all of these things. Do all. I used to take this stuff for granted. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, engage, build relationships. Please yeah, yeah. build relationships. Please build relationships. Do not take that for granted. Please do that. Okay. Now another scenario would be, as you said, starting a business with no money. Now let's say this individual already has, you know, prerequisites in terms of skills, some know-how and some initiative, some entrepreneurial yeah. in and other intangibles that are necessary within business. Yeah. Hmm. This individual can network just from this and provide a service, any professional services. Uh, yeah, keep yeah. in mind, I, you know, they already had pre, uh, prerequisites for, all of these before. This is, you know, the second scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that individual with some timing, with some trial and effort, can get it done. Please be yeah. persistent. 
please build relationships. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please give yourself time. That's why most people give up. Give yourself time. Give yourself time. I like yeah. it. I mean, I like what you're saying. And I like what you're saying. I mean, and that's why I call it, I call it financial intelligence mindset. But no, but no, we be, but we be talking more about the mindset of an entrepreneur, the mindset of someone mm -hmm. starting. You know, you know, you have to have that mindset of like, you know, you said go out there, build relationships, go out there, maybe have a side hustle, maybe uh, once you do all that, then you can keep, yeah, then you just keep plugging away. Don't give up, don't give up. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 So, in your business, in your engagement, I mean, like, are you guys training anybody? Like, you train people. Or do you like, I mean, how do you give back to, to younger people? I mean, how do you help others to come up? Well, I had an intern last year. That was, that was pretty cool. An intern? Yeah, that was pretty cool, Royston. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I think he's in college now. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard from him in a few months, but we still keep in touch. Uh, That's good. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a great process, you know breaking down some of the specifics to him. He's, he's, he's a very young man. I think he should be 17 now or 18. Very young okay. man, very talented. Yeah, you know, uh, some, I would say, it was a semi-mentorship for me as well. You know, yeah. giving him advice. You know, of course, you know, giving him recommendations. And uh, of course, you know, trying to show him that you don't have to make some of the same mistakes I made, as I as I told you before, with you know poor networking, sometimes being impatient and the like. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, yeah, that that was a really uh, remarkable experience. Ah, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. So what? So what has been the biggest financial mistake that you've made? The biggest financial mistake or the biggest mess up that you've made in terms of money and finances? Let's see. Hmm. the biggest financial mistake. <laughs> I would say leaving money on the table. I like that. Yeah, yeah, leaving money on the table. I've left a lot of money on the table because uh, I would say in the initial stages, I was, I was comfortable with what, with what I asked for. But uh, in hindsight, looking back, there was a lot more to get, but yeah. I wasn't aware. I'm aware now, but uh, you know, it, what's done is done. You know, I try to learn from those things. I, like and I try to implement all of these lessons, you know, for me to, you know, do better in the future. But yeah. I like, I like that. Yeah. So, so, how, so I don't know for that. So how do you value what you do then? I mean, if you have to, if you have to, you know, um, go talk about leaving money on the table, if you go to a customer and there, you know, you have to put a value on what you do. I mean, how do you value your service to the customer? I value the service uh, directly proportionate to what it would, the value it would bring to the customer. I heard I somebody said that, you no, know, I read this on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, I like it, I like it, I like your, it. I read, I read this on LinkedIn uh, and it's, it's, you know, it ties into what I just said. Your income or your pay is directly tied to the problem you solve. Yeah, of course. Or the value you add to others. Yes. You know so I mean, I mean, I yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, so I, I, right, I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. So, with that being said, right now we try to solve, you know, bigger problems as we, as we still, you know, maneuver in the entrepreneurship waters. We try to solve bigger problems and bigger of problems. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I actually yeah. say that profit is a reward for creating value. So the more value you create, the more profit you get. Okay, so the young man in business, I mean, what, what, what has been your biggest financial success so far? I guess, you know, closing a first deal for development. Okay. For, yeah. for, for property development? No, 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 no. Oh, 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 for software, software development, for software, software development. development. Software, yeah. software. So I, I got excited because I mean, I invest in properties and stuff. So I, I got a bit excited when you said that, but I know you've been um, software development. I got it. I yeah, got it. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and makes sense. Now I would say the new goal is 
in the future would be to raise funding okay. from a third party. That's the next, uh, that's the next yeah. triumph. Yeah, yeah, for, for an investor. Yes. Yes, that makes sense, that makes sense. I mean, I think, I mean, I think once you have a good product that's having good cash flow and you can mm -hmm. kind of predict the future cash flow of the business and you can show yeah. what's, the, what's the potential of the business and how would the investment actually help the business yeah. and what potential returns are you going to give the investor and then you can actually raise money easily, you know what I mean? Yeah, good, good, good. So linking into all those financial questions, because I, I, I call this podcast the financial intelligence mindset. So what does, uh, number one, two questions. What does a wealth mindset means to you? Mm. Right now, right now, uh, I, yeah. let me explain. Okay, so, you know, I live in the Bahamas. I, I would say my living expenses are taken care of. Yeah. Uh, as a result of my entrepreneurship efforts, um, I have my free time is now used for other things besides business. Yeah. Yeah. I have now learned the value of the true value of free time and uh, downtime, leisure time. And uh, this is only the beginning, so, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that for you, the world mindset? Yeah, and for the a second answer, I would say having the means to do as your heart's desire as a result of your, your efforts, as a result of your work, as a result of your dedication you know, that, that would be wealth, you know? I like uh, it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. And what does financial intelligence mean to you? Mm. Yeah. And how important do you think is financial intelligence for business success? Very important. You know, like they say, you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. You mm -hmm. know, that can be used in business and personal, but let's stick to business, you know. Sometimes it's okay to hold out on that, you know, if you think that would bring in a source of revenue, maybe hold out on that, do more due diligence. And uh, if you're not sure, do a little more due diligence. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, time tells everything. M maybe in the future, you would say, okay, maybe now I'm comfortable going through with this. Or maybe in the future you would see, yeah, I'm happy I did not go through with that. So sometimes, sometimes waiting helps. Yes. With sometimes all, all the time being, you know, mm, zeal having zeal for, you know, to invest or to, you know, try to get some return may not always be the best way. Speaking from my experience. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I always say investigate before you invest. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, I was talking to my clients today and I was saying to her, um, we were looking at a sort of uh, expense allocation model, and she was telling me that she didn't like the numbers. I'm like, um, you know, we in business, right? When we do business and when we, and when we do finance, it's not whether you like the numbers or not, it's what are the numbers saying and, mm. and, what, and what are the basis by which you calculated the numbers. And once, once you have the numbers, then you make a decision. It's not like you, are you think, nah, I'm gonna change the model because I don't like the numbers, you know? So I think, uh, I mean, I think for, for me, financial intelligence is obviously, uh, I mean, I might give different definition different time, but for me, it's making decisions based on information or making decisions based on investigation. I mean, you said time, time is a factor. Okay, I mean, sometimes we, we, we obviously don't have time to make decisions but we can make decisions if we make them more rational than irrational. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's kind of how I see it. Right. So, um, so Ricardo, so just before we kind of wrap up, so in terms of you and what you do in the Bahamas, I mean, obviously I said the podcast is listened widely across the U S across the Caribbean. I mean, I mean, where can people find you? I mean, I mean, where can people find you and, and if they wanted to work with you, 
yeah, I mean, just talk to us more about your business and what you can do for them and where they can find you. Sure. Or, or, um, or, or even what's, what's your ideal client? My ideal client is somebody, of course, who's ready to do business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's ready to do business. If they don't have a scope or work requirement, they are open to, you know, taking our prowess. They are decisive and they are also accountable because even though you're a client, you know, this business relationship works on both ends. You know, yeah. we both have to be accountable. Wouldn't you agree? Of course. Of course. Yeah. 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 So that would be the ideal client. Now for anybody looking to find me uh, for business purposes, islandbusinessmedia.com, uh, neotech.company. You can find me there. I mean, you can, you know, review our, our websites if you're interested in any of our services. Anybody who would like to network with me, or LinkedIn, LinkedIn, you know, slash Ricardo McCarty, you can find me there. And uh, yeah, I'm open to networking, you know. Networking is everything. Yeah, and I, I like it, obviously, I met you on LinkedIn. I mean, I'm on yes. LinkedIn quite a lot because that's where I'm kind of building uh, my network uh, of almost 10,000 people. I, 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 I like what you said, obviously, networking is really, 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 really critical and crucial if you're, yes. looking, to, if you're looking to build not just a six-figure business, but a seven-figure business, you know what I mean? You've got to network. I mean, you've got to have relationships, but more importantly, you also got to leverage those relationships. Yes, I mean? so, please build those relationships. Please respect those relationships, value them, and utilize them. Please do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good, man. So look, my, it was, it was, it was great speaking to you. And um, um, I said to you, um, obviously be connected with you as well. Because I'm actually working with some young people who are actually, remember, if I, I'm a shareholder in a company that's building um, a technology platform based on blockchain. So I guess it's, I guess it's, quite, it's quite a timely conversation. So yes. no, doubt, no doubt we will be in touch. And, um, and I'm sure that people will also be in touch with you. Uh, Ricardo McCarty on LinkedIn, are you on Instagram? Are you on, I mean, where else are you? Is it mainly LinkedIn you use these days? Mainly mainly LinkedIn for business, or you can just, you know, reach our services via our websites. Yeah, but I'm yeah. very on LinkedIn as you are. So, yes. Yeah. All right, all right. So, uh, look, man, really, really great, really, really great speaking to you. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to connecting with you um, again shortly. Thank you, Royce, and thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you.